for anyone that's been to Gear World 24 before, you may have heard that sound and you may have visited the Buddha Sala and had a tea ceremony. I'm Tony and I'm an explore leader that gets to travel with my explorers and we make tea wherever we go and we do this out of fun and a way of exploring other cultures. As you can see in this video we even do it when we're being true sea scouts and out on the river. Across the world you will find many wonderful tea ceremonies such as the Moroccan tea ceremony, the Russian tea debate with its beautiful samovars, the world famous Japanese tea ceremonies, Korean tea ceremonies and of course the Gong Fu Cha tea ceremony, the earliest type. This one is a Buddhist yak butter tea race and we have the East German Frisian tea ceremony, not to mention the cocoa and chocolate tea ceremony and in England we have our afternoon teas and our cream teas, two world famous tea ceremonies. In this video we're going to look at the Wu Wo which comes from Taiwan and it's a way of celebrating tea without self. I'm just going to talk through some of the equipment used in a Gong Fu Cha tea ceremony. And this is a tea tray or tea table and it's made of bamboo and it's where the theatre of tea takes place. Um, it's designed to be stained over time to become unique and it takes the pattern for all the teas that have been used on using it. We then have the cups. Um, these are typical Gong Fu cups made of yixing clay and they've come in different colours and different glazes and each one holds three sips so you get to drink three sips but that'll be one infusion and as you um, re-infuse the leaves you'll have about 20 of these cups up in the course of a tea ceremony. We then have the teapot um, this again is made of yixing clay and this is a, an ice glaze to match the, this, these cups and that's designed to be um, used for the making of tea as is this one which is a different style of teapot um, this one is a little bit closer to the traditional style which is called a gaiwan um, this one I picked up in a tea market in South Korea and it's quite an exciting place because it's also where I picked up this fellow and this fellow is a zisha and we would have all heard of zisha I'm sure because they're very popular now and zisha or tea pets as they're also known are made of the leftover clay from teapot manufacture and zisha is made of yixing and when you're performing a tea ceremony you would pour tea over uh, your tea pet um, there's a smaller one which is another dragon and they you would train them you train them in the ways of tea and then when a tea master dies they would, before their death, they would hide the tea pets in caves, in waterfalls, in rivers, or um, other such adventurous places. And it would be up to future tea masters to catch them, to come and catch the Zisha. And you may have guessed it, but their more modern name is both Tamagotchi and Pokemon. So this is Pokemon Mark 1 from about 3,000 years ago. And this one in particular is quite exciting because he's been to every scout tea ceremony that I've performed, which means he's been to over a thousand tea ceremonies now and met, um, uh, well, tens of thousands of scouts um, across the world. <sighs> to begin our woo woo, we just simply need a space. In this case, we're using this. This is the space we're going to make our tea in, although you could use a plastic tray, you could use a small place hut mat, or simply just an area of grass or a, a plank of wood, whatever you like, just to define that this is the area that the theatre of tea is about to take place. Then we need some tea. Now for this you can use any tea, and I'm going to go straight in with some Yorkshire tea with malty biscuit taste. I'm also going to add a saffron chai, which is a, a, an instant tea mixed in. I have some bo, which is a tea I picked up on my travels in Kuala Lumpur in January. And for the fourth tea, I have this wonderful stuff, which is Malaysian um, mare's milk tea, which is using milk which has come from horses. And this is powdered tea, which is black tea leaves. Um, sorry, not Malaysian, it's from Mongolia. 
and this was kindly given to me by um, some friends in scouting from Mongolia. So what we do is we simply put these to one side because we're going to make tea and we need four cups. Now for this it doesn't matter what you use. You could use the traditional tea style cups such as these or you could use mugs or what you've got at home and you know it doesn't matter if there's a real mismatch. We're going to go for a mug there, we'll go for a Japanese uh, reiki mug and I'm going to go for a novelty seashell and saucer cup. Now the principle of Wuwo is really simple. It's about making tea for yourself and three other people. It's explaining that tea is something which you do as a sharing activity. And the idea is you'll sit a group of friends, and that could be two people, it could be three, four, up to twenty, or even more than that, and you sit down and you each make four cups of tea. So to do that I'm going to get some water and I'm going to take the tea and for this one I've used the bo tea from um, Kuala Lumpur. I'm simply going to make four cups. And now I've made my four cups of tea I'm going to pass three cups along to my left hand side and from my right hand side I'm going to receive three new cups of tea. And I now have four cups of tea to enjoy. Hopefully the if in, in this case it would be four, three cups made by other people. So this is the cup I made for myself and these ones would be made by further people further down and you simply pass them around in a circle and enjoy. Bodhicitta is a type of contemplative exercise found in Buddhism, Hinduism and Taoism and it celebrates the minuteness of, and importance of life and how everything is connected to each other and nothing comes into being of its own. So for this we, I've simply made a tea using good old-fashioned PG tips. The Tzisha pet or the Pokemon pet is sitting on top of the tea bag at the moment guarding it for me and you can do this anywhere. You could do it at scout camp, you could do it at home. All you need to do is make a cup of tea and sit quietly and just think thousands of years ago somebody had the idea to grow tea somebody had the idea to boil tea with water and that one person having an idea led to tea plantations by being developed cultivars of plants being produced the camellia sinensis which all tea comes from being planted in vast numbers by millions of people at this stage people making tea across china across india um, across uh, Ceylon and Sri Lanka and all of these other places and how that tea comes into being. All of those people have put that effort in to define what tea is. Then you have the tea pickers that go out into the fields. And if we bring this right up to the modern day, generations of tea pickers and tea cultiv cultivars have been working together over multiple generations to perfect tea, to make tea grow properly, to grow things, to explore things. And then one morning a tea picker has gone out and picked some leaves off of a uh, tree. They've put them into a bag and those are the leaves we're drinking now. Those leaves, that story goes back thousands of years. Then gets processed, it gets packaged and again all of the human labour that goes into it, the people that made the machinery, the people that have dedicated their lives to perfecting how tea as an industry develops. It's then packaged, it's then shipped and it's sold to us by people working in supermarkets and all of the people supporting them into what they're doing. And then eventually it's come here where I've used an electric kettle which has relied on the whole human endeavour to create electricity in, in our homes. And I've used a cup which has been mass produced, which has been designed, somebody's made the tooling for it, somebody's then painted that and gl glazed it, then packaged it carefully and shipped it off to its end destination. 
And all these things have converged so that right now, at this point in time, those couple of leaves developed from hundreds of years of cultivating tea that were picked by a tea picker using their best of their skills to pick a couple of leaves have been put into a tea bag. They've then been made into this specific cup of tea and then it can be drunk. And by drinking it, we're part of that chain. We're, the end, we're witnessing the end result of all of those thousands upon millions of people that have helped to make one single cup of tea that we enjoy.